What up, everybody? It's Kyle Figley. I'm here high above WonderCon 2016 in the CBR Tiki Lounge. And to my right is uh, a woman who I think can legitimately be said to be in the running for most popular cartoonist on planet Earth, uh, Raina Telgemeier. Um, it's so much fun to see not only you continue to put these books out through Scholastic, but to see photos of little girls flipping out about this, you know. And I was just saying before we started, you know, I was at the Ann Arbor Kids Comics Festival that you were at last year, and it was, I walk in and I say, why are there 8,000 nine-year-old girls jumping up and down? Oh, there's Randy behind a table, and they're all just <laughs> waiting in a long line. You, know, you made comics on your own for so long, and you were tabling at MoCA and all sorts of other shows and, and being on a much smaller scale. I, I know that there's no way to be ready, I guess, for the success that you've had, but logistically, have you gotten used to the, I'm always gonna be going someplace, I'm always gonna be doing these signing things, or is it continually just, oh my God, here's another thing where I'm doing right now? It's kind of both. I'm, I'm, I'm not prepared for it. I know now that I'm probably gonna have a line of people yeah. that know who I am, but <laughs> it's, I, maybe it's coming from indie and small press and, and doing everything for myself that I still expect that I'm going to have to hustle. Yeah. So I do. No, yeah. And I, maybe that helps with the whole 8,000 kids thing. But yeah. I, yeah, I know it's, I haven't, I haven't really gotten used to it yet. Good, good. No, I mean, you know, <laughs> it still I, takes me by amazed surprise every time. 10 years from now, we'll do a CBR interview and you'll be like, I'm done with it. I'm bitter about it. It's just too much. Um, it's been crazy, too, because I feel like this is legitimately, I mean, I don't want to speak ill of any other publishing phenomenon that happened, but sometimes I think like, oh, this becomes a thing, and a bunch of adults read something that is nominally for children, or, you know, here is just this thing that somebody has cranked out so we can copy a bunch of these. Kids really seem to respond to your books um, uh, in a really fun way. Do you have any uh, uh, particular uh, letters you've gotten or a, a particular kind of response you've gotten when you meet these kids face to face about what they feel about the, the stories? Sometimes they can't even talk. Like sometimes <laughs> the kids are just overwhelmed and their, their mothers have to speak for them and say, no, no, that was her favorite book and she's read it 600 times. And I mean, it, it just feels like the way that I felt about comics when I was nine, yeah. which was that they mattered to me and they, they really connected with me. And if I'd had the chance to meet Bill Watterson or Lynn Johnston when I was nine, I would have been overcome with emotion. And it's, it's just such a personal connection that, that kids make to this work. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because I'm telling my own stories and so they feel like they already know me as a person and then they meet the real me, and it's kind of like meeting Mickey Mouse. She exists. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's 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 very surreal, but I don't know what it's like for them. Maybe it's surreal too. Yeah. Because they they get to know me as a cartoon character, and then I'm 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 me. Yeah. Well, it's so funny because when you're young, there is a moment I think where you connect that like, oh wait, human beings make these things that I right. like. And I remember having a woman come to my school when I was like in, in fourth or fifth grade or whatever, and you know, who knows what she was doing, what she was writing. She handed us all pictures of unicorns that she had drawn and said, you are unique. And I thought, this is pandering. Uh, you know, but I mean like still, <laughs> even that little inter interaction, you're like, oh wow, this is a person who's doing this. This is a person who's working. And I feel like that, that is an element, I guess. Do you think about that too, that like I'm providing an example that some of these kids may end up making comics or that they, they understand a little bit more about what being a, a creator is like now? I, I've been trying really hard to sort of show them how much work it is <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, when you're nine, you just want everything right away and you think that everything happens very quickly. Yeah. And a graphic novel, in my case anyway, takes two years to make and it's, it's me mostly running things, but I have a colorist and I have an editor. So yeah. so I've started doing something called Daily WIP. That's the hashtag I use mm -hmm. on Instagram and then I carry it over to my other social media. And um, pretty much every day or almost every day, I'll post just whatever is on my desk. Yeah. And so that was, that was thumbnails for a year and then it was the pencils and then it was the inks. And sometimes I'll just take a picture of my computer screen that says like buffering <laughs> or something. And it's just like, it, it lets them see the process over time and yeah. how long it takes. And I've had especially teachers tell me that they'll share that with their students. Yeah. Social media is amazing. So, so they'll share that with their students and the kids are like, oh, it takes more than like five minutes to make a comic. Okay. And they, they realize just the work that goes into it. And um, so I, I sometimes see myself as an educator in that sense. Yeah. Sometimes as an advocate, just like a cheerleader for what we do because there's you know a thousand people behind me right now that do just as much yeah. work every single day and, and it's not for nothing. And I think that kids who, who say, oh, I wanna be a graphic novel so I grow up, it's like, that sounds great. But <laughs> that means you start now 
And it's so funny because <laughs> I think this, it's not just kids sometimes. I, I uh, <laughs> did, I got asked very nicely to do a lecture at the, where I got my graduate degree in, at Hamlin in, in Minnesota. And they wanted like, Kyle, explain all these people who are studying kids books about what it's like to make comics. And I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna make them cry. <laughs> like that is all it's gonna be. And you were such a great part of it because the first work that I ever had of yours was when I first moved to New York years ago, I bought your $1 ash can yeah. smile, you know, those pages. And I got to say, <laughs> Now this is this is where it starts years before she got this done, and she redrew all these pages. You know, like I mean, the, the version of that is there, and they're like, wait, she had it all done, and then she did it all again, and it was like, yes, you know, like sometimes <laughs> that is what you have to do, and and so yeah, that's a tough lesson to learn, but it's good to have somebody be an advocate out there for it. It is, but I don't want to scare them too much and say, well, you should prepare yourself for two years of work per book. And yeah, when you're a kid, that's really intimidating. When you're an adult, it's intimidating too, but. I think I think what I want people to know is like if you put in the work every day, and if you you're willing to invest in something that you care about yeah. for that much time, like you can make good things. <laughs>